Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about pulling bullets. I'm going to demonstrate four different ways. Um, this is going to be geared towards the beginner, but I think that the advanced reloader might also um, appreciate this. Hopefully. Basically, bullet pulling is when you take a fully assembled round and you break it down into your components. So we've got the case, the bullet, and the powder. Depending on the method used, the components may or may not be reusable. Let's talk quickly about why you would want to pull bullets. Here are some examples. What if you loaded some ammunition that didn't function properly or had really poor accuracy? You could break them down and reuse the components again. Or in this case, what if you acquired some ammunition that somebody else reloaded? Typically it's a bad idea to shoot unknown ammo. The person who loaded it could have made mistakes like accidentally putting a double powder charge in. That could be very dangerous or deadly. I've pulled down hundreds of unknown reloads and then rebuilt my own ammo from them. Um, it's time consuming but it works. Another situation here, maybe you came across some old ammunition that's corroded and unsafe but you want to pull the projectile to reuse it. With the price of components these days, most reloaders would appreciate the idea of salvaging materials for reuse. Also in this video, I'm going to take into consideration lead cast bullets. These are bullets that I cast from pouring molten lead into a mold. These don't have a copper jacket on them like these others do. So the method of pulling them can vary and that needs to be taken into consideration. Method number one is a kinetic puller. This method seems to be the most common and cost effective for most reloaders. A kinetic puller like this can be bought pretty cheap. The concept is that you insert your, your live round into this collet and then you whack this against a hard surface. Here I've got a steel plate sitting on a cinder block. I found that this works really well. I've tried different surfaces like wood or just concrete or just steel. This seems to be a good combination. Upon impact, the puller stops suddenly, but the bullet wants to keep moving, except it's being held in place by the case. So, the bullet here will lurch forward. Just kind of like when you're in a car that's braking suddenly, you'll lurch forward in your seat. This is the concept of Newton's first law. Basically, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So, the way this works is, you open it up, and you insert your live round like that. It snaps in. Drop it in, and you thread this cap on. Now, this is just plastic. You don't want to wind it on real tight. I'm just barely snugging it like that. Otherwise you're going to mess up the threads. Now, you whack it. Sometimes it takes a few whacks. And you need to whack it hard. And you need to keep applying force. You don't whack it and just let it bounce. You want it to hit hard so that the bullet will lurch forward. Here we go. This is clear, so I can see that the bullet did come out. There's our empty case. Still has the primer in it. And there's our components. So, using this method, um, it does take a little bit of manual labor, but it works well. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're using bullets that have a soft tip, see that's got an exposed lead tip, or there are some with a plastic tip, when these fall out of the case and they land in the bottom, it can smash that tip and deform it. So you want to be careful. One thing I've done with mine 
Sometimes I stick a piece of soft foam down in the bottom. That way when it comes out it's got a cushion to hit and that helps keep from damaging the projectile tip. One important thing to keep in mind is this is a pretty brutal way to pull bullets. So while it's fine for regular ammunition, you never want to use anything fancy in it like tracers or spotter or explosive ammunition uh, because these have chemicals inside the bullet themselves that can detonate and you don't want to set them off. All in all, this is a good method. I'd say this is the most commonly used method because it's very inexpensive and it's easy to operate. If you're just a uh, reloader that once in a while needs to pull down some bullets, I'd say this is the most cost-effective way to go. Okay, method number two is a collet style puller. This is a die that threads into your reloading press. You then must install the appropriate size collet to match the caliber you're working with. The collet is basically a metal tube with some fingers cut in it that your projectile fits into. When you move this handle, it causes these fingers to squeeze and they'll grab the bullet. At that point you can lower the case and the bullet should stay up inside the collet and you're done. So let's give it a shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the handle up to open the fingers. I then raise the bullet up in and I feel it stop. Right now the neck is right against the collet. So I close the handle and I can, right now the collet is gripping the bullet. So I can lower the ram and now the bullet's been removed. It's still up inside the collet. At this point, if I raise the handle, the bullet drops out, and there it is. This method works really well for pulling bullets without scarring them. It does take a little bit of work to get this die adjusted. It's not too difficult, but I've um, heard of people having trouble, but it's all a matter of getting it adjusted. Once you learn how to do it, it's not difficult at all. These aren't terribly expensive, but they are significantly more than a kinetic style puller. Um, if you're going to be doing a lot of reloading or bullet pulling, definitely worth the investment. Once you buy the die assembly, then the only thing you need to buy to do different calibers is the different collets. This is definitely the way to go if you're going to be pulling bullets that have explosives in them or tracer rounds, things that you don't want to apply a shock force too, like with the kinetic puller, this is a very gentle method. So if you've got bullets with funny colored tips, you want to be careful. Um, things like this one, or this one, which is a um, armor-piercing incendiary round, collette style pulling is definitely the way to go. Method number three requires no special tools other than just your reloading press and a pair of hand tools like wire cutters, wire strippers, good pair of pliers, vice grips, something like that to grip the bullet with. The idea is to raise the bullet through the top of the press like that and then you grab it with the tool and once you've got a firm grip on it you lower the bullet and it pulls it out. This process works really well but it'll usually damage the projectile, rendering it unusable. As you can see in this one, I've already pulled it once. You can see the scarring on it. That doesn't necessarily mean it's unusable, but it might be under certain circumstances. This process all also works really well for lead cast bullets, the soft lead. Um, that won't work in the collet style puller because it'll just deform and squish up. You can get a nice grip on it with your pliers, pull it out. Yes, the bullet is damaged, but you can just chuck it into your casting pot and melt it down and cast new bullets out of it. So let's give this a shot. 
I like this pair of wire cutters because it's actually got a notch in it. This was, um, these belong to an electrician and I believe that these were melted by a live wire, but it makes a nice spot to grab the bullet. There we go. Method number four requires no tools at all. I saw this method on YouTube demonstrated by Ammo Smith, and I'm going to try it here. The idea is that you use a previously fired case as a tool to loosen the bullet, and then you pull the bullet by hand. The reason you want a previously fired case is because it will slip over the bullet. This can result in deforming the brass, but that may be correctable by sizing it. So the idea is you basically bend it and work it and that should loosen up the bullet, which it's starting to. This is not easy. There we go, it's loose. So now I can pull the bullet out. We can salvage our powder. And the case doesn't look too bad. Let me run the case through the neck sizer real quick. Nice tight fit. So it looks like this method works okay, it's a lot of work, and the brass wasn't destroyed. So that's another method that you might consider using if you maybe are in the field and you need to pull some down, or just have one and you don't have any other tools to do it with. One last tip to keep in mind, if you're having trouble pulling your bullet, a lot of bullets have a sealant around them to help keep moisture and water out. This kind of acts like a glue and it's going to keep it, it's going to make it difficult to pull. So one little tip is if you put this into your reloading press and you press the bullet down into the case, just a hair, it barely needs to move at all, it'll break that bond and then it'll be much easier to pull the bullet. I really appreciate you watching my video. If you find it interesting, I ask that you please consider subscribing to my channel. This will keep you informed of future videos that I release. Maybe you'll enjoy them too. Thank you.